Greetings gardeners and welcome to the trial garden. Rick and I are here in our beautiful trial garden here in West Michigan today and we're going to give you a little update of some of the things that we looked at on our last garden tour. Uh, but first I want to address a lot of people when we published that last garden tour they wrote in and said oh my gosh please tell me your trial gardens are open to the public and they are not. This is actually a private residence so no you can't come and see them. Although you will actually have an opportunity next summer, it's going to be on the Grand Haven Garden Walk in 2024. So um, if you're interested, make sure you keep in touch with the Tri-Cities Garden Club and you might just get your chance to visit. But in the meantime, we're gonna give you an inside look of what's happening. And we're gonna start with a plant that both Rick and I adore. Oh, love it. Temple of Bloom uh, Heptacodium, also known as Seven Sunflower. Now, this is a plant that it's a perfect time to talk about it because it's in the unique stage of combining its flowers, which are the little white things that you see here, with these showier red bracts. When the flower drops, it reveals this red bract, and then it almost looks like this plant is in bloom all over again, but with red flowers instead of white. And these red bracts, they persist for quite some time. It doesn't really get great fall color in terms of the foliage, but as you can see, this is an amazing plant for four seeds of interest. And that's something we were talking about in a recent episode. Exactly. And from a distance, as you're approaching the tree, you're right. The bracts look like flowers. You're like, what's in bloom right now? Yeah, you're like, I thought that thing just bloomed with white flowers. And now it looks like it's blooming with red. So this is Temple of Bloom Hepticodium, also known as Seven Sunflower. And that's sun, S-O-N, not sun, like in the sky. So this next plant is one of our newest hydrangeas. As we look for plants that have better cold tolerance and better reblooming, we introduce them and replace them with the older varieties that aren't up to snuff. That's just how plant breeding works. But I wanted to bring this up. You can see this in our last video. It was just fading. Do you remember? It looked absolutely amazing, but it was kind of on the downswing. And now here we are about six weeks later from our last video, or maybe two months later. And uh, what you can see is that these older, more papery, sort of uh, dark pink blooms down here, these are the old wood blooms that were flowering in the August video. But you also see there's a bunch of new wood flowers coming up. All these fresh flowers, this is the re-bloom or the bloom on the new wood. And um, like I said in the last video, Megan Matai, the breeder of this, she said there's just one problem. It just doesn't bloom enough. You can see what she's talking about. So this is Limelight Prime Panicle Hydrangea. And this is a variety that we introduced, gosh, about three or four years ago. And you know, for a long time, we wanted an improved limelight, something that bloomed earlier, because limelight can be very late to bloom. Like if you go up north of Michigan, it might be blooming at like the last week of August and the sure. kids are going back to school and who wants a Panicle Hydrangea that blooms then? <laughs> but so it blooms earlier. Um, it's a little bit more of a smaller size, so a little bit easier to use in your landscape, and it has much, much better color. And to prove that point, I did go and trim this limelight bloom from another limelight here in our trial garden so we could come over and compare it to the bright, wow. vivid, I mean, how would you even describe that? Um, pink mauve explosion with a little bit of tan, speckled, gorgeous. Right. So. This is the original limelight, just a tiny little bit of pink. So not only is it later to bloom or later to turn color, but the color doesn't get nearly as vivid. So if what you really love about Panicle Hydrangeas is this pink fall color, Limelight Prime is an excellent choice. So Stacy, this is what I love about Own Root Roses is that we're well beyond Labor Day but they perform beautifully late into the season. And of course, this at last rose, in addition to the gorgeous color it's showing here, late in the season, I'm picking up wafts of the fragrance. Especially too. on a breezy day like on today, where day. it's a little bit warm. Yeah. You know, it's so funny that people think of roses so much as a summer flower. Exactly. When they are just incredible in fall, especially landscape roses like at last, that don't need deadheading. Once those cooler temperatures start coming, those longer nights, they just come into their own with brighter, more vivid color than they had in the summer. And as fabulous as these roses look right now, I hope that everyone can see, maybe Adriana can uh, get some close-ups of just how many buds yeah. there are still to come on these roses. It's these. like they get a second wind. 
Yeah, you know? yeah, they really do. And that means a second wind for your landscape. And you might be noticing all the petals on the ground here, and that's exactly what Atlas is supposed to do. It's a self-cleaning rose. And so that means when the bloom starts to fade, instead of turning into a big pile of yucky mush on top of the plant, the petals actually shatter and fall all over, making this beautiful carpet and not making big, ugly, brown stuff on your roses. Now, this moment looked absolutely incredible when we did our summer garden tour. And happy to report, it still looks absolutely incredible. So if you recall correctly, this combination, the lower um, hydrangea macrophylla or big leaf hydrangea down here is Let's Dance Sky View. And the paniculata back here is Little Lime Punch. And you know, like we were just talking about with Tough Stuff Top Fun, you can really see on these Let's Dance Sky Views, um, now that the old wood flowers have aged, just how good of a rebloomer this is. So all these fresh purpley blue flowers that you're seeing, this is new wood flowers. It's flowering on the growth that it's put on this season. And basically what that means to you as a gardener is that even if it was improperly pruned, if you get winter dieback because we had a really harsh winter or a spring freeze that uh, you know freezes off the flower buds, you can still get flowers. And that's exactly what's happening here. Now we don't recommend that you prune it improperly or you know expose it to the weather, but if you do, you still have a chance to get flowers. And that's one of the things that makes Let's Dance Sky View so revolutionary, as well as this beautiful color. They are a little bit purple on the side. You know, a lot of people think that just because we're in West Michigan, and have a lot of blueberry growing that we have acidic mm. soil but we don't actually we have fairly neutral soil it's just easier to change the ph in a sandy soil and make it more amenable to blueberries so generally hydrangeas tend to be on the purple to pinky red side if they're not treated so that's why these have that purple color instead of a true blue and then little lime punch is a new sort of updated version of little lime so very small very dense and much like we were just showing with Limelight Prime in the original Limelight, much, much more vivid color. And we talked about this in Plants on Trial, I think a few weeks ago, um, that this is one of those plants, it's a, a panicle hydrangea, which are easy to grow, but it has a couple of quirks in it that you just have to have a little bit more patience. It's not really gonna show its best color until it's been in the ground at least three years and has the resources to develop those really super vivid pigments. Every week on the Gardening Simplified show, we do plants on trial. And uh, Stacy, you really sold me on Little Lime Punch. And this fall, I've had the opportunity to watch that transition through the colors. Amazing. That plant, you know, the proof is in the per, uh, performance. Same with Sky View. Amazing. The colors, the, the unique I'm going to call it metamorphosis, yeah, I guess, it is a metamorphosis. through the seasons. It, it's unreal. And you know what else is really cool? Even though these are both two really super summery plants, the colors that they change right now do feel right at home in the fall landscape. Yeah, yeah they do. So this is Pinky Winky Prime Panicle Hydrangea. Now I just told you about Limelight Prime. So basically, as our plant breeding develops improved varieties of our panicle hydrangeas, we're giving this prime designation. And so what that's gonna mean is that you're gonna see better color, bigger blooms, earlier bloom time, because nobody wants to wait until the end of the summer to get flowers, stronger stems. And so this is the improved newer version of Pinky Winky. Now Pinky Winky hydrangea is a plant that's been around for a very long time. And this one actually comes from the same breeder, Dr. Johan von Heilenbroek in Belgium. And I don't have an original Pinky Winky handy to show you the color difference, but trust me, this is about 10 shades more vivid and brighter than the original and a lot earlier because other Pinky Winkies wouldn't really have this much color. Now you can see that it's still a lace cap. So you still have a lot of these, what were fertile florets sticking out. So it's really beneficial for pollinators. This plant, unlike most of the other primes, does get a little bit bigger than the original Pinky Winky. But if you have space for a big, full-size panicle hydrangea, Pinky Winky Prime is an awesome choice. All right, Stacy, come over here. I've discovered buried treasure. 
oh my, and then I kind of stagger in this direction because I love carry up. It's a great combination. And just like we were saying with Let's Dance Skyview and Little Lime Punch, it's a color combination that you really wouldn't yes. expect in fall, but it's so unexpected and so fun that, you know, it's nice to have something that's not just all red and yellow and everything. So this is Proudberry Coralberry. And this is a plant that, you know, totally, I'm sure you saw it when you worked in the garden center, um, gets passed over yep. until now. And then everyone's like, like much right. in the spring. Yeah. I mean, it has nice enough foliage, but people don't really have the trust or the mm -hmm. faith that it's going to turn into this amazing plant that's really interesting, really eye-catching, um, you know, come fall. And this is super deer resistant. It's drought tolerant. It's hardy. It's disease resistant. It hosts some really amazing native um, larva of native butterflies and moths. Makes an awesome cut flower. If you're just looking for a super low maintenance plant that's going to look great without you having to do anything about it, I think Proudberry Coralberry is one of our absolute best choices. And Stacy, even though it's fall, again, it's a good reminder that pink's a great color in the landscape because pink plays well with all types of colors, whether it's orange, uh, red, and even blue like this Caryopteris here. I just think it's the perfect combination. So. You know, again, people don't necessarily associate pink with fall, but it sure works in the garden. It does. And we're turning that uh, on its head. So we talked about Beyond Midnight, uh, Caryopteris, as our plant on trial recently. Now, this is just coming to the end of its bloom time, and it's also kind of a cold and windy day. So right. we're not seeing the trademark uh, bumblebees all over it. But you can see the blue color. You can see that nice dark green foliage and the kind of whiskery flowers uh, that give it the name Bluebeard. Stacy, on the Gardening Simplified show, we often talk about how fall is for planting, and it's such a great time of the year to be out in the garden. I think in spring, the pace is so fast. There's so much to do and so little time to do it. Things kind of slow down in fall, and the plants reflect that. I just love this time of the year in the garden. It is pretty great. It is. And do you love this plant? I love <laughs> puffer fish hydrangea. I have it in my landscape. Oh, you do? And this thing has just amazing interest. It is, it's such a different panicle hydrangea. And I think, you know, panicle hydrangeas have been in gardens for over 200 years. And so it's kind of like, well, what's next? And I think pufferfish is a great alternative for people who don't like pink. And there are those people. I, you know, we've seen some amazing looking pink panicle hydrangeas mm -hmm. today. But some people are like, ah, I don't want it. I want it to be white. I want it to be green. And so this is a young, on the young side, puffer fish hydrangea. And this one does not age to pink. The flowers are going to start to go green and then they'll go a little brown as they age out. But before they do, they have this, I think, delightful characteristic of putting out this fresh little sprig of white flowers before the flower fades completely. And so you get this amazing um, texture. And this is where the name comes from, like a puffer fish. It just poof, So um, you can kind of think of this, one of our best selling uh, plants is Bobo Hydrangea. This is a little bit like Bobo, but the flowers are bigger. And again, it doesn't age to pink. And it has this really fun characteristic of having this little spurt of flowers just as a last ditch effort before it starts to go dormant. I think it's a really fun and interesting choice. And you know what, that's what gardening's all about. Yeah, exactly. We have to have fun out in the landscape, but I'll tell you what, when you walk through the garden in fall, there's plenty of interest to go around. Especially in this garden. You got it. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, we wanted to kind of give you this update based on what you saw in our last tour and um, get you excited about the possibilities of this amazing season. So thank you so much for joining us.